Hi everyone, I'm Tara Short with Green Adventures Tours and I'm here with Lori Anderson. And tonight we're gonna to be talking to you about our Uganda trip. And um, and uh, and if those of you who don't know about Green Adventures, uh, Green Adventures is celebrating their 15th year, which is pretty exciting in 2024 uh, with I think 15 destinations at this point. Uh, um, we are everywhere from Alaska to Iceland to Africa to uh, we've added Greenland and Peru. And um, Green Adventures was born, uh, we ran, ran our first trips in 2009 as a way for teachers to bridge classroom concepts with real world environmental experiences. So my first trips were for science teachers and their students. And then uh, in 2010, we offered our first women's travel group uh, to Baja. And um, it's because of those original 10 ladies uh, that we have so many new destinations now, they, uh, because they're like, where are we going next, Tara? And I was like, I have some ideas. <laughs> so, um, and, and we just kept growing our community of like-minded women who like to learn in the outdoors, to, to learn outdoor adventures, um, in a safe, non-competitive learning environment. And Green Adventures uh, was raised by an organization called Becoming an Outdoors Woman. Uh, Becoming an Outdoors Woman uh, is, they do weekend workshops in many states uh, across the United States. Um, and um, uh, they're the, uh, uh, they help women, um, uh, well, they identify barriers to women in the outdoors and they help women learn outdoor skills um, and in a safe uh, learning environment and help them step outside their comfort zones. And and um, it's, it's really empowering workshops. So Becoming an Outdoors Woman uh, was actually the first uh, one to contact us to organize those group tours. And uh, so uh, we continue on with those same philosophies today. And I, I really, truly believe that's the reason why we grew from uh, uh, you know 10 ladies to now we have 320 participants every year. And we really hope that you will join us on a trip. And tonight we're here to talk about our Uganda trip. Um, and if you want to change the slide, Lori. Yep. <laughs> oh, and, uh, yeah. And actually, um, we'll go ahead and uh, go ahead and change the slide. Um, uh, our mission is to help people fall in love with wild places through extraordinary eco ventures and to protect people, places, and ecosystems through ecotourism. But we couldn't do that without our local partners on site. Uh, who um, are, they're the experts in the places we visit. We hire local teams and, and outfitters, and they're the ones that take us into these beautiful places, and they're the, the permitted people. Uh, and we also try to contribute to local conservation efforts in the places we visit. Um, and in addition to your local team, you have a trip leader who's on board with you. And Lori Anderson is one of our fabulous trip leaders. Uh, and Lori, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hi, yeah, I'm Lori. Um, I live in Wisconsin, and um, I have been passionate about travel for as long as I can remember. Took my first trip um, without my parents out of the country when I was 11 years old. Um, I was gone to Canada for a month, and um, I've just been in love with travel ever since. Um, I have been on 16 Green Adventures trips as a participant. I was close to have close to having taken them all when Tara added new destinations. And so, you know, the uh, the uh, finish line was moved. And and so like, you know, a whole new goal uh, put in front of me. And um, I have since um, also led an additional 12 trips. So Uganda will be number 13. Looking forward to that. And we're luck we're really so lucky to have you. I think all of our trip leaders bring a unique, like unique gifts uh, to the, the program. And I, I always say that Lori's is, that she is amazing at bringing people together uh, from all different you know, backgrounds and walks of life. Uh, uh, and she is the master at games. Uh, and she <laughs> always has uh, some sort of game in her back pocket that uh, you may, I'm the type of person who's hesitant at first to do a game, but you can't help it. You get in there and it's like, this, these are really good games. I love it. So, uh, and, and she's also somebody who is super encouraging um, and uh, knows like uh, helps with the seamless transitions uh, between, you know, between activities and helps you um, get prepared every day for what to expect the next day. So thanks, Lori, for being part of the team. Um, so you wanna go to the next slide? So how did the, people always ask me, how did you design this trip? Why, why, how did you end up going to Uganda? How did you end up going to Iceland? And they all have their own unique story and I'd love to tell you about them on a trip one day, but I can tell you that they all start with a dream. And I can remember a 14 year old, 
Tara sitting in the living room and the, I remember it was dark and I was, I was, it was a watching from a box television, you know, those ones that sat on the ground and uh, uh, Gorillas in the Mist was on and, um, and I just felt so moved by the story and the, there's a sense of adventure. And I thought one day I'm going to see mountain gorillas in the wild, but I didn't know how to do it. I didn't know if I was ever going to do it. And actually Africa was the continent was really, it seemed a very daunting place to go. You need a bunch of shots and is it dangerous? All da, 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 yada, yada, yada. Well, um, I kept that dream in my mind and I always, you know, people would say, are you doing trips to Africa yet? And I'm like, no, not yet, but I want to. And then, um, one day, a person who put puts people like me together with like our outfitters in that you're going to meet uh, shortly here in Uganda um, said, "What are you doing in What are you doing in April? Do you want to?" I said, well, "I don't know. This is April of 2018." She's like, "What are you doing in April?" And I was like, I "I'm not sure." She goes, "Well, do you want to go to Uganda?" <laughs> I said, "Will I see the gorillas?" And she's like, "Yes." So that's what I did. I jumped on a plane with one other gal. And I met our guide and um, we embarked on the journey that you are going to, you are going to do. And after I experienced being in Uganda um, and meeting the people um, and, and seeing the gorillas, I, I guess one of the things that surprised me the most is that it's, you go there for the gorillas, but you stay for the, a, a bigger, more spiritual experience um, that is very holistic from the sense of just this feeling of wildness and feeling of like the goodness of people and like also the um, just how resilient those people are and 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 um, and then also the other uh, game uh, uh, the other parks that we visit and the iconic places that I read about in books the Victoria Nile Lake uh, Lake Victoria. Um, but windy and penetrable forest. It, it, like, it felt to me like as if I was going to the same ex excitement as if I was going to the pyramids in Egypt. So that's what this place has to offer for you. And uh, so um, if you're listening to this, you had a dream about going to see gorillas and Lori and I are here to help you achieve that dream, that dream and, um, and tell you what you, give you an overview of the itinerary that we do. And uh, um, also talk about the packing list and um, any other, you know, specific details that are pertinent to the trip. And at the end, those of you who are here on the live presentation, feel free to ask questions uh, in the chat and we can address them as the presentation goes on. So from this point forward, Lori, you could take it from here. Awesome, thanks Cheryl. Okay, Uganda, the Pearl of Africa. Let's see what it's all about. Okay, so where is Uganda? It's the pink country here in the middle and it's rests right along the equator. And on this trip, we will cross the equator a couple of times, which is a, a fun event all in its own to, to know that you've crossed the equator. Makes for some good photo ops as well. And how do we get there? Um, there's a number of, um, of the major airlines that can uh, get you to Entebbe, Uganda. Um, you can connect through Brussels, Amsterdam, um, Adi Ababa in Ethiopia, and uh, through, you can use Ethiopian Airlines, Brussels Airlines, um, Delta KLM. Um, you'll need to allow about 24 hours of travel, depending upon the number of flights that you have, the number of layovers that you have, and the cost that we've been finding um, this year, somewhere between $900, $1,300 um, from North America. And we will supply you with um, all of the travel parameters that you need. Um, we send out a packet that includes, um, you know, schedule a flight that has you arriving in Uganda by this time, this date, and a departure flight that has you leaving by this time and this date. So all of those details will be provided. Um, you'll also understand um, all of the entry and ex exit requirements that you'll need. Uh, very important that your passport has at least two blank pages. And another um, important thing to look at is the expiration date on your passport. It needs to be at least six months beyond your exit date from Uganda, um, at least six months and uh, for your valid for your passport to be valid. For Uganda, the one vaccination that you absolutely need to have is the yellow fever um, vaccine. And when you get that, you're issued this um, yellow, um, yellow, yellow card that you see in the background. And the tourist visa for Uganda is $50. It is all done online. 
And then um, at the moment, uh, the uh, test for COVID, um, you need to have a negative COVID PCR test taken no more than 72 hours before departure to Uganda, unless you are vaccinated. Uh, what's our promise? Um, you may be coming on this trip by yourself, but you are never alone. We are your, I'll be your first travel buddy. Um, we have travel buddies um, um, back in the States um, as well. And uh, we have all, we have support for you 24 seven. So prior to the trip, you will get an extensive packet of information. It includes a very detailed packing list. How much of this, how many shirts to pack, how many pants to pack, what type, we'll get down to colors and we'll talk about that a, a bit more um, as on the slides to come. We also strongly suggest that you get travel insurance. Um, all kinds of things can happen. Let the travel insurance um, take that headache away for you. Um, um, our team in Uganda will be waiting for you when you arrive and we'll get you to our first lodge. So all along 24 seven support. Um, our local guide is with us 24 seven from the beginning of the trip to the end of the trip. Um, this includes illness and accident support, um, arranged for you to get any necessary tests to return um, to the States. Um, we um, had great experience with that all through um, uh, uh, following the years of COVID. Um, so we are, we can um, take care of all of that for you. And again, our uh, local guides um, take care of getting us to the airport and seeing us off at that point as well. Here's Paul, our local guide, um, expert on Uganda, expert birder, um, one of the friendliest people you will ever meet. This gives us a snapshot of what does it look like inside the safari vehicle? You'll see there are um, six seats. Uh, this shows you four, but there are six um, seats behind the driver. Everybody has a window seat. Every seat is a good view. Um, and you, we encourage people move around um, from day to day, um, experience this seat, experience that seat. Uh, there may be times where you can sit up front with the driver, but every seat is a great view. And then in addition, the roof of all of the vehicles pop up and open whenever we're in one of the safari parks. And this gives you an unobstructed view for all of the wildlife. Um, this is, uh, she's standing on the floor and can see uh, right out of uh, the top of the vehicle. Luggage, um, you'll find in our packing list that it reads no hard-sided luggage, no roller bags. And this is because of the little puzzle that our guides have to um, take care of every day to load the luggage. Um, everybody's luggage has to fit in the back of this vehicle. We move from day to day um, in a large circle around Uganda, and it has to fit very carefully all in this um, space that's in the back of the vehicle. So we look for soft-sided luggage, um, no hard-sided roller bags. Clothing. Okay, clothing for Uganda, very important. Um, you want um, safari colors, forest friendly colors. We look for khaki, um, tans, grays, greens, um, anything along that color spectrum. We want to blend in with the um, animals and the, um, and the landscape around us as much as possible. That will give us the best chance, best experience at spotting the wildlife. So on this, um, um, slide here, you see a rain jacket, um, just in case we run into any rainy weather. Um, mornings can be cool. That um, also helps um, with uh, uh, that. Um, you want um, hiking boots that uh, come up over your ankle. Um, you'll see down in the corner, we also um, have uh, show you a bug spray of um, permethrin to treat your clothing. Um, we suggest strongly suggest that you do that. Um, and a pair of rain pants, um, if necessary. The uh, bug spray is to ward off the TT flies can be in the area. And uh, so if we treat our clothing, that helps, um, helps us with that whole situation. Um, we talk about ankle high boosts, just in case we have uh, uh, the truck has a flat tire out in the park and we have to get out while they change the flat tire. It is for our protection to have our ankles covered when we're in the taller grass um, out on the savanna. 
Here's a picture of some of the accessories that we suggest. First and foremost, up in the um, upper left-hand corner are binoculars. You will absolutely positively want your own set of binoculars. Um, maybe if you don't own a set already, maybe there's a pair that you can borrow from friends or family. Um, we will have in our documentation suggestions of what models to buy and what strength to, to buy. Um, but that is uh, one piece of equipment that you absolutely will want to have um, a pair of binoculars of your own. Your phone will take excellent pictures. The cameras on phones these days are so amazing that um, you will get excellent pictures and zoomed in pictures that are very, very good with your phone. Um, so that means don't feel you have to go out and buy a good um, SLR camera. Um, if you want to, fine. Um, I, I bring along a camera. I have a Sony XR R10 that I'm very, very pleased with. Um, it doesn't, uh, you can't swap out lenses on my camera. It's a fixed lens that goes to a 600 zoom. Um, and I love it, but we don't, we certainly don't expect everybody to go out and, and buy a good camera. We share all of our pictures on all of our trips. So no matter what I take, that will also um, get into our photo circle app that where we share all of our pictures. Down in the lower left is another little accessory um, uh, that uh, is a strap that you can uh, connect your binoculars to, and it just gives an easy way to like constantly um, have them right at at uh, the ready to um, to to lift up and for good wildlife viewing. I bought one after the my last trip, and um, I haven't used it yet, so I'm definitely going to have to uh, practice with that before we go on the trip and. Uh, Make sure I've, I've, uh, I'm comfortable with it and, and I'm all set. Our packing list, again, will include all of the recommendations of what you absolutely have to have on the trip and other things that are optional. So where are we going? Um, this is a little map of Uganda, and you'll see that we make a very wide circle around almost the entire country here. We cover over a 1,000 miles in this um expansive time. So that's a, a large area that we're covering and we're hitting um, all of the um, great must-see places. Here's a quick shot of all of the different lodges that we'll be staying at. You'll see that we are at a lodge usually two nights, sometimes three nights. Once in a while we're at a place just one night, but we are on the move making this circle, um, getting you to see um, all the best things to see in Uganda. Okay, our, we start out here, um, we fly into Entebbe, um, and our first day is going out onto Lake Victoria, out into the Mambamba Swamp. We start out in these large wooden boats, and we move out onto the Mabamba Swamp. It's an extensive march, uh, stretches out over into the um, Lake Victoria. And then as we get closer and closer to this swamp, you can see we are now um, in amongst all of the papyrus reeds. Um, there's a large, large bird population in this area, lots of different bird types. If you um, are a birder, uh, you will be in heaven. If you are not a birder, you may very well become a birder. The birds in Uganda, um, tiny little beautifully colored birds, huge birds, everything in between. But this trip, what we're after, what we're trying to see is the shoebill stork. Uh, this is a picture of our entryway into uh, where we load up into the boats. Oops. We load up into these large uh, wooden boats and off we go. And what I love about this is, I mean, it's such a, tr like a real adventure. I mean, you are, um, uh, you you're like going through these papyrus swamps and you'll get to a point where the motor doesn't work anymore and they have to use these sticks to push you through the swamp. And like these guys are working so hard to find, I don't even know how they find any, how they find the shoe bill. Like, like they, we have, it hasn't been any time that we've gone out there yet and haven't seen these like living dinosaurs. Um, these aren't endangered, but they're critically threatened. And if you, anybody's a birder, this is on your bird, this is your bird list. 
Um, and so um, it's just so cool. I feel like you're getting close to a living dinosaur. So this is this is how you kick off uh, your your adventure out on Lake Victoria and Mabamba Swamp. And there are times going through this swamp where it gets so thick, uh, the the uh, men have to jump out of the boat and then they are walking in the swamp water, pushing and pulling the boat to get it through. And if any of you have seen African Queen, that is the exact image that came to my mind when they did that for the first time. Um, it's awesome. You are just right in the thick of it. We, we all go out in a large wooden boat and then we transfer to the smaller wooden boats where there's two or three of us at a time into the smaller wooden boats that gets us into these um, tighter areas right in the middle of the swamps. And we're all wearing masks because this was during the time when uh, this is 2021 in this photo. So it was right after 2020. And or I just want to, uh, there's been some questions in the chat about COVID vaccines. And um, I believe that that slide is an old slide that you, you read. Oh, uh, yeah. sorry about that. Yeah, so um, in the process of putting these presentations together pretty quickly, that bit of information, and Laurie was just you know going with what what's on the slide, but it, our team missed taking that part out of there. I have not seen anything uh, from the US State Department in Uganda or the CDC at this point stating that you need a COVID vaccine. It's only recommended. Um, and the timing of this slideshow is actually slightly before I'm sending out the tour detail documents, which is when I take the time to research all those specific uh, nuances. Um, so apologies for any conflicting information there. Go ahead. Thank you. Sorry about that. And here's the Shoeville store. They look absolutely prehistoric. They're uh, four feet tall. Uh, they can get up to uh, taller than that. And they look like dinosaurs. And it is just amazing when uh, we finally get one into view and, uh, and get those great photo ops. As Tara said, we have not been on a trip yet where they have not been able to find one. These guys are diligent. They, they keep looking and looking. And Mabamba, the reason it's called Mabamba Swamp, it's named after the, the lungfish that is in the swamp and it's called the Mabamba. And those, and the, those, um, uh, the, the shoebills eat those. That's what they're out there hunting is the lungfish. Awesome. And here's a few examples of a few other um, birds that we'll see along the way. Um, little egret up in, up in the upper left-hand corner going clockwise. Malachite kingfisher, very, very colorful, um, bright little bird. It's a flash of light as it uh, flies past you and you hope to see that it perched. Uh, Yellow-billed duck on the bottom and the African jacana um, over on the left lower corner. Lots of birds throughout Uganda. On our next, we're, um, we head to the um, rhino sanctuary and we get the opportunity to walk amongst the rhinoceros. Uh, on the map, we are at, uh, we're here at C as we move up to the rhino sanctuary. Okay. Um, and this sanctuary in Uganda is the only place where you can walk with the wild rhin rhinos. And um, there are no fences. When you're walking with the rhinos, there's no fence between you and this group of rhinos. It's amazing. And we are walking with the guides. We get uh, orientation ahead of time as to what to expect, um, what to do, how to act, um, everything you need to see these um, magnificent um, animals uh, this close. We're getting some uh, orientation from um, the guides that are with us, information on, on what they do at the sanctuary. Walking through, again, no fences in this area. Uh, all right, our next we are moving up further north to uh, Matcheson Falls National Park. We visit the falls from two directions. We um, visit it from the top of the falls where we see all of the water uh, coming down, going over the falls. Um, this, air, this park is awesome. It covers 1500 square miles on both sides of the Nile River. We'll see a lot of wildlife in this area as well. 
Here's an example of the uh, savanna area. All animals in the background. Elephants, up close and personal. Giraffes. And here we have um, Jackson's hartebeest. And I, I believe this one is a Uganda cob and a bush buck on the bottom. Lots of large antelope in Uganda. Monkeys, leopards, uh, wildebeest, iguana, or mon uh, monitor lizard. So Matchison Falls, um, it looks like it should be pronounced Murchison, uh, but we we have learned the, it's, the pronunciation is Matchin Falls. And again, we are going to visit this uh, area on two different occasions. We're going to be up here and see the falls from up on top and uh, tons of uh, water spray coming um, uh, up over the, the rim and uh, rainbows. We see it just crashing through this very narrow gap and uh, falling below. Oh. Uh, uh, sorry, that slide's out of order. Oh, I, no, I, I, I'm sorry. This is the both of the uh, Nile River below the falls. And uh, here we have uh, our travel buddy, Libby, and in the background, great big crocodile. You'll see wildlife all along the shoreline along this, this is the Nile River, and um, wildlife is all along the shoreline, close up, elephants, lots and lots of birds, flocks of birds. And again, we'll see, um, Hippos, a uh, fish eagle up here, another kingfisher. And this is the view from below. We get as close as we're allowed. Um, it's amazing view. And what's more special than ha having a Nile while you're on the Nile? Um, all right, then we move down to Kabali National Park. And Kabali National Park, is where we will have our chimpanzee encounter. We, this park is uh, the capital, primate capital of Uganda. Um, it boasts having 13 different species of primates um, to uh, this little monkey up here on the top and our chimpanzee on the bottom. Uh, we will get, uh, this is, I'm sorry, this is our, lodging in Kabali, uh, the uh, chimpanzee lodge, overlooking this beautiful Uganda, the uh, landscape in Uganda, beautiful, lush, green. And this is, will give you a little example of what does our lodging look like. Here you see the best of mosquito netting. All of our lodging, flushing toilets, full showers, and the view. Look at this view. Absolutely amazing, absolutely gorgeous. And what I, a lot I just want to point ahead. too, it's just that we go birding in the morning too. So anybody who loves to like, it wants to keep adding birds to their list. We'll go out with Paul and with the scope and, and their binoculars. And you will probably add another 10 different birds to your list just in, from their garden. At, at least, yes. Every morning, um, Paul makes it available to, um, if you want to bird with him early in the morning before breakfast, it's an amazing opportunity. He's got spotting scopes with him. Um, if, if a bird is there, he's going to find it. This is an example of at any point in time, we can see um, wildlife. Here's a family of baboons alongside the road. For the um, our excursion into the um, Kabali National Forest to see the chimpanzees, we have an orientation first uh, with the rangers. They give us um, instructions, um, what to expect, um, how to act around the chimpanzees, how close we can get. 
uh, you may we may be walking along boardwalks. Uh, the it could be wet, it could be muddy, it could be rainy, it could be a nice day. We never know what to expect. They know where the chimpanzees are are at, uh, and uh, it could take us um, a short time to find them. We could be you know walking for forty five minutes before we find them, but we keep going and we follow the rangers and the guides. Sometimes we go off trail until we find the chimpanzees. In this example here, the chimpanzee is up in the in the tree up here. Got a, a video coming up as well. Please make sure I use this chance. And what's happening here? It's the it's the um the the lead males in the group, um and you're seeing grooming behavior between the, the, they call it the prime minister, the president, and the secretary of state. <laughs> they were saying, um and so uh these are, these are the main the main uh, males of the of the uh, troop, and it's quite often that we do see them on the ground. If it's a real rainy day, though, um, they'll stay. They're just like people. They want to stay comfortable, and they don't want to come down into the, um, uh, you know, onto the the wet uh, ground. But um, I think of the four times I've done this, it was only once that they stayed in the trees. And we we once we find the troops here, we get to stay and watch them, um, and uh, watch all of the behaviors. Very close. Here's another one. This is Anthropology 101. This is our closest animal relative. They share like 99.97% of our DNA. That's chimpanzees in the background vocalizing communicating to um, other troops and families um, in the area. Here's a couple of guys showing off all their stuff, relaxing. And you'll get a tracking certificate uh, that you have completed this experience and found the chimpanzees. This is another view of the from the lodge where we're staying at. Uh, sunrise, uh, yeah, burning, burning at this time of morning. Absolutely gorgeous. You don't want to miss it. The landscape throughout Uganda, lush, green, beautiful. As we continue on, we um, head to Queen Elizabeth Park, down in this area, down in here. And Queen Elizabeth Park, in this section that we're in, is known for the tree climbing lions. And in this picture, you can spot two of them. There's one guy here, one gal here, and another gal over here. And they climb up in the trees to get away from the heat, to get away from um, ants. And uh, here's Tara pointing out a lion up in that tree there. This is uh, Topi. They're the largest um, antelope in Uganda and the fastest. Another example of um, just how close some of the wildlife can be. Cape Buffalo, one of the big five. These guys, they're also known as um, old generals. Uh, once the males um, get to a certain age, uh, they're kind of uh, kicked out of the group and uh, you'll see them off on, on their own, old generals. 
Here's another picture of the tree climbing lions. Fan favorite always to see the lions. I always think that they look like Christmas tree ornaments. The way that they like they hang out on the the branches and their little legs hang over. Um, but uh, it's it's amazing just how close you can how close you can get. Like if you saw in the the way that the jeep had pulled up, um, we get amazing pictures. You can hear them breathing. You can hear them, their claws um, on the um, uh, on the branches. Um, yeah. So and in Queen Elizabeth, uh, this is a, a scrub savanna um, uh, environment. So you're going to see a couple of different types of habitats. Um, the one Maction Falls is um, I can't remember the name of the, the plant right offhand, but it's that that uh, the palm that palm it, it's like a, a a palm savanna. So you'll see different. What I love about each of the parks, it's it's a different landscape. We move down to the windy impenetrable forest. Uh, we're now we're now down in this um, south corner. Um, as we get ready for the gorilla experience. So here's a couple of the gr gorillas uh, in the forest. You will not believe how close you're able to get um, to these. They're, they're absolutely majestic. This is home to the mountain gorillas. Um, so you're in a tropical rainforest. You're walking um, with your guides, with your porters. Uh, there's a there's a whole entourage to um, that travel with us on this experience. At times, they can be use, using machetes to cut their way through um, um, as we are in search of our mountain gorillas. This little monkey here, lowest monkey, looks like he's having a little white beard on him. Blue monkeys up on top. Uh, there are also um, uh, uh, Forest elephants in the area. We have I've never seen a forest elephant, but we know that they're in the area there, and the and their guides are on the lookout for them. Uh, this is a, a example of the the habitat all around this area: lush, mountainous, beautiful, stretches on for miles and miles. Uh, this is uh, from our uh, lodge in the uh, near the Bundy National Forest, overlooking all these beautiful valleys. And our dining hall at the um, at our lodge. Oh, what? Let me talk one one second about um, while we're on the dining hall. A question that I get asked a lot is, uh, "What is the food like?" Um, and you you can um, feel assured that all of the food is cooked to Western standards. Um, we will have a, lot, a wide variety of chicken, fish, a lot of soups. A lot of salads. It is safe to eat all of the salads. Um, often people worry about that when they're traveling internationally, but all of the lodges that we stay at cook to Western standards. You don't have to worry about any of that at all. All of the lodges that we stay at have um, full shower facilities and flushing toilets, running you know, sinks. Um, you um, will be amazed at the lodge lodges that we have and how beautiful all of the accommodations are. I, I want to point out with the, the, can you go back? Sorry, it's just at this yep. accommodation. Notice everyone's wearing warmer clothes. You know, they're wearing thicker jackets. They're bundled up. You're at about 7,500 feet here. So the elevation, it's going to be, it's going to feel cooler. And I, have, I would have to say, this is the most rustic of the places we stay at. Um, there's just not very many options um, in the villages near where we go trekking to see the gorillas. But you stay in these these cute little like cabins that overlook, um, you know, the the windy and penetrable forest out there um, and the tea fields that are adjacent to them. Um, but that's just that you'll see on the packing list. You're like, why do I need a warm jacket? I thought I was going to the equatorial Africa. Yes, you are. But you're going to be it'll be hot near Lake Victoria. And then you're gradually going to go up in elevation and it'll be chilly at night. Uh, here's a, a picture of one of the uh, gorilla troops, one of the gorilla families. Um, and as we get to this experience, 
they'll divide us up to which family we'll be going out to meet. You get to see pictures ahead of time of um, all of the gorillas that they've identified and the families that are in the area, the troops that are in the area. Uh, you can see here that we are equipped with uh, trekking poles, hats. Uh, we wear, this This again was right um, in 2021, this picture was taken, but we do wear masks um, even to this day when we're out to see the gorillas. Uh, they are close enough um, to us that um, we don't want to pass anything off to them. We The last thing we want to do is um, transfer anything to the gorillas um, and make, make them sick. So we do wear masks on on this experience. We uh, You want to be have long sleeves. You can see that the women are wearing gloves. It's like you, we don't know at what point we may have to go off the path. And then you, you may have to um, grab onto um, this bush or this vine or um, this tree. And you want to have your hands covered. Also in this picture, you can see off to the right are um, men carrying backpacks. Those are our backpacks. Um, everybody will have their own porter. The porter carries um, everything. They carry your backpack, your water, your camera, um, and uh, they are there to offer a helping hand uh, or they'll extend a hand. You can ask for help. They are there to make this trek um, as uh, comfortable for you as possible. Uh, the trek will be, uh, it, there could be an easy trek, a medium trek, and that will determine like, uh, what's the landscape like? Is it, uh, are we going up or down in elevation? There's no um, deadline on this. Uh, the scouts go, go out in the morning, they know where the uh, gorillas are located, and then our guides are in communication with them to, to get us to where the gorillas are actually situated. Uh, the first time that I went, we started out on a, a big, wide path, you know, anything like you might find around um, around the states. And the path got narrower and narrower and narrower. And then pretty soon it was it was time to go off path, took a sharp right, and you are in the thick of the jungle. We were walking on, um, like, you couldn't even see the forest floor. There were so many palm fronds and leaves and everything on the floor. You couldn't see the forest floor. And the guides um, are with us. Us every step of the way, leading us up to the gorillas. You can see here how it's starting to get thicker and thicker. This is a slow and steady truck. We're not in a race. Um, if we have to stop and catch our breath, we stop and catch our breath. But here's a, here's a great view of how close we are. If I remember correctly, because uh, I took this video that shortly following the female walking up this uh, side is a, is a silverback who is, the, unfortunately the, the video is, is skipping a little bit just because of the internet connection, but I think a silverback is coming next. And it's just amazing to be on the ground next to these huge animals. Um, and uh, it, it definitely humbles you because they move fast, but these are habituated gorillas. So they're used to people viewing them one hour every day. These aren't non-habituated, which could be, you know, violent towards people these guys know where they they're they're familiar with the rangers uh they're familiar with visitors so um that's what makes this uh you know it's possible i think the video just looped again Lori. i don't think i'm it, sorry okay yeah, that's okay i think yeah. that there is there is one the, the, the silver back there's a video with the silver back okay to the yeah, in a second. So again, this this can just give you an example of how thick the forest is. You are you are in the middle of this forest, and again, the the porters they're they're there to help you every step of the way. I can remember on my first experience here, we were on a on a very steep angle like this. We were up here, the gorillas were down here, and I was trying to stand and you know focus, you know hold my um, good camera steady and the porter stepped up front and they they literally hung on to me by my waist to help steady me on this um steep um incline great profile of a gorilla 
and let's see if this is our video. This is a couple of younger gorillas wrestling. It's a little a little hard to tell like who's here at the moment, but now you can see. Are shooting around to see if we can see more the visuals here. These guys here rolling around playing like a couple of small kids. It's very much the feeling that you'll get is like it's so much like watching children. There's a really young one in the background. So this gorilla has always been, um, when they are growing, they grow in the fences or in the, in the, part, in the in fences. The first one is very young, below five years, the baby. Little guy testing out, learning how to climb. There's another one, very young. Even though, look at how, even how small he is. The dexterity is incredible. He's got it. He's got it. He's been watching the older ones. He knows what to do. <laughs> you can see in the background, there's some, some bigger girl is laying there. And look at, there he is. That's a silverback. They're massive. Absolutely huge. And the incredible thing is, in an instant, he can disappear into this lush forest and completely disappear there we are the whole group having succeeded gone on our on the gorilla trek and a certificate to, to prove we accomplished it oh, paul calls it the switzerland of uganda uh, and and this is very typical we can be riding along the road you know going from like one lodge to the next when um paul sees he's a bird he'll see uh, you know possibly wildlife whatever stop the jeep and um and everybody gets the view it's incredible what they're able to see about two thousand meters and above while they're driving All right, that takes us down to um, Lake Maburo. 
is uh, one other national park. Uh, and we go out um, uh, on a boat ride uh, on the lake in this park. And again, lots of different wildlife. This is our opportunity to see the plain zebra that are down in this area. Beautiful um, Savannah Park, um, a tiny little park, but as we say here, carries a heavy punch. Great opportunity for um, all sorts of wildlife. Beautiful, beautiful stretching view. Right, zebras. And little mongoose. More gazelles. This is the crested crane. It's the national bird of Uganda. They're beautiful, regal. They pose for good pictures. Then we're going to go out on a boat ride out onto uh, Lake Mamburo. And uh, for a small little lake, it it also packs a great punch. Um, we see a lot of hippos. They look they look so cute. They're a very very dangerous animal. We get some good shots of them. Um, crocodiles. And this is our our uh, I believe this is our last lodge. And again, you'll find all of the lodge, all of our accommodations um, are um, are absolutely fantastic. Um, mosquito netting on all of the beds. Um, this and, one's called Rokobo, Rokobo Rock. Rokobo Rock. Yeah, I this is also this is I think one of my favorites. I just love the pool and like looking out over the savanna, and you'll hear like you hear animals by your your little houses at night, like warthogs and ba definitely baboons. And sometimes there's like uh, the um, antelope out front too. And that gets us back to Entebbe, back to where we started. And that's our trip to Uganda. Do you have any questions? Anything come up in the chat, Tara? Uh, we I've been answering questions in the chat um, and um, some of them were, uh, do we need uh, walking sticks? Um, and um, I was, I, I replied that walking sticks are not, you don't have to bring them. They actually have like, they have the old school walking stick, like a staff that they make from a tree branch. They're sturdy. Um, and you you just need one because a porter is usually helping you with the other hand. There's always the porters will be in front of you and behind you, uh, and you'll you'll find that there's a lot of pushing uh, from the backside and pulling from the front side, <laughs> uh, and you just learn to accept the help. I found at first I was like I got this, I got this, and then but they just so badly want to help, so you just accept it. Okay, help me, and it's great because there you get your feet caught in like as you're walking through those you know uh, through those trails that the vegetation and the vines wrap around your feet uh, or there's little holes you don't see. And so they're they're feeling through the path for you and, and they're pointing out all those things. And they are truly, uh, they're, they're the reason why a lot of the people get to this, like to get up to see the gorillas because they're carrying all your stuff and they're just super helpful. Uh, and so you don't have to bring your own trekking poles. Um, if you would like to bring one, I, I think someone brought trekking poles once in the year I did it, but did anybody bring trekking poles on your trip, Laura? Um, I think we had, we had a couple people that, that brought them, you know, but again, um, they're supplied. Yeah. I feel like if, the, if you got to make sure yours, if you bring one, don't bring one with the baskets on the end, you know, like, or not, you know, how they have like, uh, they have like a little, I don't know, it's like a stopper. So it goes in the dirt. It, it's not, but if you have, I, I picture that getting caught in a lot of the vegetation, it, uh, the, the regular walking stick is best. And uh, let me see if there's any others. There were some uh, good questions that were kind of coming up. Um, I think that was it actually. We covered the other things. It was about vaccines. Uh, is there like yellow fever vaccine? Um, how soon do you have to get it? Do you have, and there's really, you could show up with a yellow card that you got the day before. Uh, you, it's there's no window of time 
to have entry into Uganda, but um, uh, to have the, like they say they have the vaccine kick in, it should be two weeks before, like you need about two weeks for the vaccine to, 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 to kick in. But Uganda, I, I don't think they've had an issue with yellow fever because they're so vigilant about preventing yellow fever. And that's also vaccine, but that's I wouldn't wait vaccine. until, what? I'm going to say that vaccine is also a one and done. Once you yeah. get it, you, you Yes, need one it. and done. Thank you. Yeah, you only need to do that once. And then um, don't wait until last minute. So uh, if you don't have a yellow fever, if you haven't gotten yellow fever vaccine, make your appointment now and uh, get that scheduled because I don't know how many, like this, we've been saying this for five years, there's a yellow fever vaccine shortage, but nobody's ever not been able to get their vaccine. And anybody who's watching this with a question, are there medical exemptions? There are, you just need to talk to your physician about that. Um, you can get a, a letter stating that, I, I think there, yellow fever is, is not recommended for people over 65. Please don't quote me on that, but I, I think that there's something in the literature about that. And so you might have an age exemption and then also some people who have medical issues that just can't, you know, get the vaccines. Um, have I know I know of some of our clients who have traveled with certified letters. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Any other questions? Well, you covered everything, Lori. Thank you. I I, I mean, it was just I just jumped in because I wanted to tell the story because I was like, oh, I remember that. Uh, the, just you know, like this is part of you know. I, I just want you to know the name of this place or what we're feeling or, or just something specific about that photo. And um, so thank you very much for anybody who's, uh, for everyone who's come tonight to uh, learn about our Uganda trip. The trip is confirmed. It's just waiting for you. So you can sign up if, um, and take advantage of the payment plans. It's a $200 deposit by January 15th, which is coming up. And then uh, you will pay in equal installments uh, after that. It's in the registration. It'll tell you what your installments are. But after January 15th, you can still sign up. It's just going to be a higher down payment. Um, but we are just about to send out those travel parameters, which is that goes with the trip confirmation. It's it's all part of the trip confirmation process. So you're getting in right now. Well, like just as we're forming the group. So uh, if you're like, yeah, I want to do that, uh, do it. Sign up so you can you, we can have you in the same communication path as and plan as everybody else. Um, but I'm going to turn off the record now, but we'll stick around if anybody has any more questions. And um, thank you again, Lori. That was a really good presentation.